Welcome back to Baking with Love. I'm Carolyn Stellatella, aka Stella, coming to you from the Peg TV Kitchen Studio. And today I'd like to share with you a delicious and easy autumn recipe, apple crisp. Do you know Vermont state fruit? You might have guessed. It's the apple. Yep. Vermont grows about 40 million pounds of apples per year, but that doesn't get us into the top five. Let's take a look. Washington State is over 6 billion pounds of apples per year. They produce about 63% of our country's total. Then we have Michigan, followed very closely by our neighbors, New York and Pennsylvania and Virginia. There are over 150 varieties of apples that grow in our brave little state, but the number one variety is the Macintosh. Overall in the US, Red Delicious is number one. But did you know the only apple native to North America is the crab apple? All the other varieties started coming over with settlers in the 1600s, and then other varieties were created here. So let's get to our recipe, and I'll share a lot of more fun apple facts as we go. We're going to make an apple crisp. Do you know the difference between a cobbler and a crisp? Crisps tend to have uh, oats in their topping, whereas cobblers have a little more cakey, almost biscuit-like topping. So today we're making a crisp, and I'm going to use the food processor uh, fitted with our dough blade. You can do this by hand with a pastry blender or even um, two forks. So we're going to start with a half a cup of all-purpose flour, three quarters cup of brown sugar. Now, we've talked about brown sugar in another episode. I'm using dark brown. The brownness is based on how much molasses is in the sugar. So it'll be a little bit more robust with the dark brown sugar, and you're welcome to use light brown if you'd like. Uh, we're gonna add, oh, the, the smells and tastes of fall. A teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of salt because we're going to be using unsalted butter. So there's our salt. And we're going to pulse this and then I'll grab our butter. I left our butter in the fridge. You want a half a cup or one stick of cold butter cut up. So I already cut it up, but I left it in here to make sure it's nice and cold for us. So we're going to add some of the butter and then we'll, add, we'll do a couple pulses and we'll add a few more chunks, and we want to get it to be coarse crumbs. So it's a streusel topping. You might remember this time last year, I was making my bumpy pumpkin bread with streusel topping, and streusel is a German word that means strewn about. So we're going to strewn about this topping on top of our apples before we bake. The number one country in the world for apple production is China. The US is number two, and followed by Turkey and Poland and Italy. So there's our half a cup or one stick of cold unsalted butter. We're gonna pulse it again. Apples are actually the number two crop, fruit crop grown in the US. Can you guess the number one? It's oranges. And if you remember our February episode where I made the galette, I mentioned that the number three uh, fruit grown in the US is cherries. So it's oranges, apples, and cherries. All right, that looks good. So we're gonna transfer this into this bowl. Take out my blade. You can see all the sugar and flour is incorporated. You know what, I'll move our graph at this point. So you've got the top five apple producing states. Vermont isn't one of them, but we love our Vermont apples. Maybe you have a tradition of going apple picking with your family. You can get some apples uh, and make this recipe. All right, so like I said, a crisp uses oats. I'm using old fashioned oats. Um, as you just, I mentioned about my bumpy pumpkin bread. I like my stuff bumpy. If you want a little uh, finer texture, you can use uh, quick oats. So this is one cup and this is an option. The recipe's on the Peg TV website and I mentioned you can also add a half a cup of chopped pecans to the topping. I'm not gonna add the nuts today. And then I just use my hands to mix it all together, make sure the oats are combined. And then I'm gonna pop it back in the fridge while we prepare our filling. That way that butter will stay nice and cold. And that way we'll have nice crumbs when we go to top our filling, our apples. All right, so we've got brown sugar, flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, a pinch of salt, butter, and oats. That's very simple and 
that's our topping. As I mentioned, this is a really easy recipe, so I hope you'll give it a try, and it's always a big hit, especially this time of year. All right, so I'm going to place this back in the fridge. I'll just put a little lid on it and give my hands a little wash, and we'll get to the star of our show, the apple. The world's biggest apple. I always love to have world records on this show. The world's biggest apple was grown in Japan in 2005, and it weighed 4.1 pounds. Now, I read somewhere that an average Honeycrisp, which is one of the apples we'll be using today, weighs about six ounces. So if my math was right, uh, that's about 11 or 12 Honeycrisp apples. We would only need one apple to make two of these recipes. Oh, before you got here, I preheated our oven to 350, and I sprayed an 8x8 glass baking dish with a little nonstick uh, cooking spray. So here we have a variety of apples, and as I mentioned, we're going to be using Honeycrisp. Uh, I like the texture and also a little bit of sweetness from the Honeycrisp. And then we're going to be using Granny Smith, the green apple. Granny Smith has a little more tart uh, flavor and a firm texture, which holds up really well uh, for baking. You can use uh, only one type of apple if you'd like. Some people uh, go with Golden Delicious for a recipe like this. Um, you might have to experiment a little bit. Now, this recipe calls for five cups of peeled, cored, and thinly sliced apples. Um, that's where a little bit of the work comes in, but uh, you might use just a paring knife. Uh, maybe you have a peeler like this, and this also cores, or even a peeler like this, but you might be lucky enough to have a peeler like this. I think it's called a Johnny Apple Peeler. Um, I am not lucky enough to have a peeler like this, but I am lucky enough to be able to borrow this peeler. I borrowed this from my dear old Uncle Frank, who is a very big fan of this show. He's watched every episode, and he's also an official taste tester for Baking with Love. When I do test bakes, I have certain people that uh, I can trust to give me uh, honest feedback. So he tastes it and he lets me know what it needs, what it doesn't need. Um, mostly he just says it's delicious, but he's my uncle. So I'm gonna put this apple uh, stem side in on these three prongs. If this is suctioned to the countertop, some of them have a little clamp, and then I'm just gonna give it a spin. Let's see, hopefully it lines up, and it will peel, core, and slice our apple just like that. So that'll make fast work of our five cups. So we've got the peel, which is very nice. My dogs also love this. Um, we've got the core, which you can back this out and get the core off. And then we've got the apple already sliced. It's kind of like a slinky, as you can see. And then if it has a little more peel on it, you can use your paring knife to get that off. But then you just cut it in half and you've got all these nice, thin, uniform slices. So before you got here, I did the five cups that we but there's one additional one, and then this is great compost. Um, apples are fat-free, cholesterol-free, sodium-free. Uh, they have a great, if you do eat the peel, they're a great source of fiber, and they, um, they're a healthy snack. There's a lot of sayings about apples, like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um, also, you're the apple of my eye. So here we have our five cups of apples. I'll add this one more Granny Smith. It's Granny Smith and Honeycrisp, as I mentioned, and it'll bake down. So if, you, if your five cups is heaping, that's fine. I wanted to demonstrate that fun peeler. And like I said, if you have a couple of slices with peel still on, you can just give them a little trim, and that way the peel won't be chewy for your eaters. All right, so now for our filling. We've got our streusel topping chilling. Now we're gonna use our five cups of cored 
peeled and sliced, thanks to dear old Uncle Frank, into this bowl. And we're going to add, let me just clean this off. We're going to add uh, a half a cup of dark brown sugar. Again, I'm using the dark brown variety. Oops. And uh, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, apples, as you probably know, will brown if they are left out. Uh, that's just an oxidation process. They have enzymes that start to do that. So it's good to, some people use lemon juice, some people soak them in a uh, little salt water. Okay, here's those spices again that we mentioned. We've got this time a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's going to make your whole house smell like fall when you're baking this so good. And then we've got two teaspoons of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, and a little of it spilled, so I'm just going to pick up the plate and get the rest of that teaspoon in there. We pre-measure stuff so that it saves us some time. And then two and a half tablespoons of softened or melted butter. And the most important ingredient on this show, you know it, a couple of. So we're going to sprinkle a generous couple of in there and talk about some other apple sayings. Do you know the song, I love you, a bushel and a peck? A peck is 10.5 pounds of apples and a bushel is 42 pounds. So there's four pecks in a bushel. And the song goes, I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. I do not know how much a hug around the neck weighs, but that's your bushel and your peck. OK, so that is really nice. You're going to see all the apples coated with all of those ingredients. Now, uh, some people might like Dutch apple pie. And if you know, Dutch apple pie contains raisins. So just like I mentioned, you could have the option of putting pecans in your topping. You have the option of putting raisins in your filling. Uh, I'm not going to do it today, but as I mentioned, the recipe's on the Peg TV website, and you can check it out. I have the measurements for the pecans and the raisins if you'd like to add them. And we're just going to, a little extra love. OK, so now, as I mentioned, this is a really quick and easy recipe. We're going to transfer our apple mixture into our prepared pan. And again, it's going to bake down a little bit, so it could be a little heaping. We can just squish it around a little bit. That extra apple that I did for the demo makes it nice and full. And then we're going to add our streusel topping, streusel topping without nuts. But again, feel free, if you're feeling nutty, to add. I would have added pecans, but uh, some people also like walnuts. So you can experiment with that, make it a little bit your own. OK, next, back to our crumbs. So it should be nice and bumpy because our butter is cold. Yep. And you can press it into the corners and kind of jiggle it a little bit so that it'll hold. What else can I tell you? Uh, why is New York called the Big Apple? Back in the 1920s and 30s, jazz musicians thought uh, New York was the premier city for jazz, and they had a saying, there are many apples on the tree, but only one big apple, uh, referring to New York. And then years later, in the 1970s, the Vermont Bureau of Tourism took the saying and tried to rebrand the city after a little bit of a decline. So they used the big apple as a tourism 
slogan and made shirts and stickers and it really stuck. And that's where the big apple came from. All right, so now we've got this nice, I'm gonna just give it a little tap, get all the rest of the crumbs out and pop this into our preheated 350 degree oven in the middle for about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, halfway through, about the 20 minute mark, I'll give it a spin and then just watch it near the end because you might see that your top is getting a little dark. So you want it to be browned and the filling bubbly. If at the end it does start to get a little dark, you can just take a little piece of foil, use it as a little heat shield and prevent that from happening. So let's give this a wipe and we'll go into our Peg TV time machine as we so often do. You can use your imagination and we're going to pretend 40 to 45 minutes has gone by and we're ready to take out our finished apple crisp. So let's see. Ah, so the topping has gotten nice and golden. It's got a nice, it'll be warm and bubbly, but you want to eat it warm, but not boiling hot. So after it comes out, I would say let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes before serving. And then I will give you some serving suggestions. So again, using your imagination, we're going to let it rest. And then we're going to get some vanilla ice cream out of the freezer. And if this is still, maybe it needs a few seconds. I'm just going to stick this in the microwave real quick. And we're going to give you a really nice serving suggestion. And that is warm apple crisp with vanilla ice cream and a little caramel sauce. Now, you can make the caramel sauce or you can just use store-bought kind of a ice cream topping, something like that. I have a little homemade here, but it just was a little bit thick, so we warmed it up. Okay, so after your crisp has, it's not cold, but it's cooled a little bit, 10 to 15 minutes, you can Break through the topping. Scoop out a nice amount of apple. Oh, you can see how that brown sugar kind of caramelized it. And do another one right here. People can always come back for seconds. That's a nice, generous serving. There's a nice crumb, the bumps that I said I mentioned. And now, maybe not everyone wants it with ice cream, but we've got a nice scoop. Get this lid off and put that there. I'll leave one with and one without for you non-dairy people. Well, it does have, it does have um, butter in the recipe. And then as I mentioned, a little drizzle of caramel sauce. Mm, maybe even a little pinch of cinnamon on top of the ice cream. That is a quintessential fall treat. There you have it. Apple crisp a la mode with caramel sauce. Happy fall, everybody. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time on Baking with Love.